Chris look before this is a actually we're going to show that to you in just a moment um, but what we do want to say is uh, that today at least we've heard a couple of bits of good news this morning we were told that uh, about 500,000 people Center Point had returned their power as we say that still leaves more than 1.6 million without and that's just for uh, Center Point there are other energy companies who are working feverishly as well but in the meantime we are flying over Bolivar Peninsula in Sky Eye um, and looking at just the unbelievable Unbelievable amount of debris as a result of uh, Hurricane Ike. Yeah, folks, and as we continue to look at some of these pictures here, uh, we'll just kind of keep uh, updating you on tidbits of information that continue to stream into the newsroom. Uh, we're now hearing from uh, from HISD that will be closed. All of the campuses, the district will be closed through Friday now. So um, I know everybody's been wondering about uh, when things could possibly get back to normal, the kids can back, get back into school, but at least uh, it won't happen this week, folks, as there's a, uh, a lot of uh, damage assessment that needs to take place at that school. We uh, heard from uh, the SA uh, the SI of HISD Abes of Adra last night, and he said there was some damage to uh, several of the schools as well as uh, some looter problems as well. But uh, they're going to have to at least get through this week before they figure out when they can reopen the district once more. And that is true of virtually every single school district in the region. Uh, we've been getting phone calls. Many of those are available on our website, uh, abc13.com. But we realize that with many of you still out of power and perhaps listening to us on the radio, a battery-operated radio, instead of watching us on television, it's probably equally hard to find a spot to go look at a website. Uh, so uh, what you might just want to do is give a call to your particular school district and find out how long they will be out of service until power is restored to most of these districts. It looks as though uh, all of the kids are going to be out for a while. And so that's just a quick word to the side here. We continue to look at uh, these live pictures from Bolivar Peninsula. This is really the first up close look we've gotten. Uh, we got a quick look yesterday, but Dave Garrett is uh, kind enough to give us some great detail of this area. And as you can see here, just the devastation overwhelming, Dave. Yeah, absolutely, Melanie. Uh, we just saw a car, uh, and we've seen several cars actually out here driving uh, from being out here earlier this morning uh, to this afternoon. I was talking to John uh, Downhower, who's been uh, doing a fabulous job flying us around here uh, over the weekend and this afternoon. Uh, there are about 10 rescue helicopters, or Coast Guard, Coast Guard helicopters out here right now. Uh, we had a pretty good shot of one earlier, right before we went to break. Uh, but he continued on further east down uh, 87, the main drag through here. Um, I believe he was, for the most part, patrolling the area. We haven't heard of uh, any rescues uh, going on at the moment between those 10 aircraft that are out here. Of course, if we do, we'll try to get over there as promptly as possible and bring those pictures to you. All right, Dave Garrett, thanks so much as we continue. Now, are we are actually in Crystal Beach now, is that right? That's correct. We're right over uh, Crystal Beach where we were talking to Wayne earlier this uh, this morning. Right, when we spotted him there. And, and again, we're looking at some of the uh, debris piles. And you, you, you try to wrap your head around what this might have been. If uh, what we're looking at is uh, a home that was just completely uh, obliterated or if this is debris that flew across from so many other places. Uh, just really hard to tell, isn't it? It's, it is. It's really difficult to tell. Um, you know, with the storm surge that came uh, in here, uh, once it came on the island, it looks like, you know, the storm surge hit a few homes, knocked those homes off the slabs. Those homes hit other homes almost as if it were a domino effect. Uh, and as a result, you have just piles and piles of debris all up and down the main stretch of road that comes through here. Now, uh, we should mention, Dave, that right about now, uh, Tim Heller is sitting here. He's just pulled up some satellite photographs of Crystal Beach. And if our director might be able to perhaps allow us to still watch your video as it comes in and also see this, uh, this, this satellite photograph. Sunday. Okay. This was taken Sunday, and you can see pretty much complete mm -hmm. destruction over a wide area. And this is actually just a small section of a big photo that pretty much covers this part of Bolivar Peninsula. But that is the satellite photograph that shows you fairly, fairly clearly what uh, what we're looking at as uh, Dave Garrett continues to bring us live pictures from Crystal Beach. And, and uh, Tim, it was interesting how you were telling us earlier that uh, as far as how things have been reconfigured at some point, you were saying some, uh, I guess, geographers and, and research teams will get in at some point down the road and, and measure all this stuff. But no 
no doubt uh, uh, sections have been reconfigured in, in terms of waterways. And and the fact that we've got satellite pictures that detailed already means that they're already doing some quick analysis before mm -hmm. things people get in there and start moving things around. And, and because one of the things they're going to look at, for example, will be how does the sand, how did mm -hmm. the sand realign there, and mm -hmm. what was the flow in this area, and uh, and that's what those pictures will show. The them. first time we're actually seeing what appears to be National Guardsmen. Uh, this is in Crystal Beach, uh, walking, I assume, door to door, trying to find out. It, it looks as though they're carrying equipment that would allow them to bang on the door or perhaps knock doors down if they have to. Yeah, definitely uh, uh, conducting some of the welfare checks you're alluding to, Mel, and definitely in their fatigues and, uh, yeah, just, uh, I guess, making their way to the homes that are still standing at this point right now. Uh, we have joining us right now, as we continue to look at these live pictures, uh, a guest with FEMA, uh, Mr. Alberto. Well, we are. We do have more. And now we're we finally go. beginning to see some real action here. I yeah. uh, don't know which agency this is, but as you can see, uh, lots of first responders now loading up on the back of this truck. It appears as though some of them are, well, and, and we're going to hope for that picture back. It almost appears as though some of them are firefighters. Kind of hard to tell who they are. Definitely, uh, yeah. Some, uh, I know we've heard about different types of uh, search and rescue teams, but they've all got all kinds of uh, tools. We've seen uh, some axes. This is search and rescue, we're being told. Shovels, uh, like you were alluding to earlier, Mel, mm -hmm. definitely uh, with tools that they can go in and check some residences that uh, be either crumble to the ground and they've got to peel away debris uh, to maybe see if there's someone inside, if, if there's uh, something that's given them that indication, uh, or also just knock on a door of a residence that is still standing there, but you can even see that they are... Uh, piled up in the back of this uh, dump truck here as they uh, start to head out in different areas of the uh, Crystal Beach uh, there on Bolivar Peninsula uh, at this hour. And Wayne Dolcefino, we talked to him by telephone a few minutes ago, and, and we're going to try to get back in touch with him as soon as we can. He's on a satellite cell phone. But uh, one of the things he said earlier was he got there by, uh, by boat and had not seen anybody, no one uh, actually conducting any kind of search and rescue, uh, th that they were virtually alone as they walked up and down the beach. But now you can begin to see a full team of people moving in, uh, all sorts of um, uh, different equipment and, and vehicles apparently going door to door and asking people that they may find at home like that uh, family we saw just a moment ago uh, how they're doing if they manage to survive all right we presume also asking them if they need things like water and ice and MREs uh, so we are finally seeing them for the first yeah. time and, and folks if we kind of look at these pictures here we definitely want to uh, maybe come back to those and also look at uh, some of the damage that's been uh, been also uh, gathered by our crews uh, farther west on Galveston uh, we know we have Christine Dobbin uh, live on Folks, welcome back to our continuous coverage of the road recovery in the aftermath of Hurricane Ike. Uh, as we show live pictures of, from Sky IHD over the Bolivar Peninsula, we are joined by Dan Parsons of the Better Business Bureau, who's definitely given us some helpful tips. And then when you do find a contractor you're comfortable with, go ahead and have him pay, sign a contract and pay in thirds with a credit card if you can. Some of the main bullet points he was telling you there as, uh, as we start to deal with a lot of fly-by-night contractors coming into town. And Sky is now headed towards Galveston. This is that sunken uh, ship that uh, you may have seen off uh, the Bolivar Peninsula before. Um, and it is still there. It doesn't seem any the worse for wear. Um, but believe me, it looked like that before the storm, so don't, don't panic. That's <laughs> That's the way it's supposed to look. But it turns out to be an absolutely gorgeous day, uh, Tim Heller. I mean, you promised us that once we got through the last couple of days of heat and humidity, that you were going to bring us a beautiful day. And indeed I didn't you did. bring it. I just told you that. Yeah, that's right. You did. That's right. You, you do answer to a much higher authority, as we all do. But, uh, but it has turned out to be a gorgeous day. And I think makes it a lot easier on folks as they have to go through all of these things. To I don't know about you, but I got up this morning sometime in the middle of the night and shut the windows because mm -hmm. it was actually too cool in my house but uh, it, it's kind of nice to have that as opposed to the heat that we had after Alicia so we got a little break for the people without air conditioning and they're still about 75 percent of the area without it so yeah and and this could almost be just another beautiful day on the water as we look at all of these boats here um, but 
you've got to remember that so many of the boats that we've seen over the last few days have been broken, have been upside down, have, have yes. been pitched halfway across the county. Uh, still amazing to think of the shot of the causeway with all of those boats sort of hurled on top like a bunch of broken toys uh, out of the water and onto the causeway. But uh, as we continue to go down the coastline here, it really is a gorgeous day as the sun shines. But, uh, by the way, Tim, how high will it get today and what kind of humidity level are we looking at? Talking low 80s around the area. Tonight, uh, humidity stays low to the point where you're not even going to notice it. Tonight, we're going to drop down to the upper 50s, low 60s across the area. So, another chilly night. You have to yeah. shut the window again. I think so. <laughs> but, summer, which is a good thing. Yeah, it's yes. a real blessing for all of us who don't have power, though, uh, that, you know, we've uh, been I suffering pretty miserably. I for the window miserably. open last night, as, as Tim did. If it's possible, I hate to pull an audible on the control room, but I, I, I talked about this about an hour ago, so I'd like to show it to you if it's possible. Is there any way we could take the weather source computer and kind of do a little squeeze box with uh, while we're still looking at the sky eye aerials? Uh, yes, weather source one, if you would. Guys, uh, uh, Mel, when you were talking with Tom Cook a little bit earlier, you were talking about the fact that we still have about six weeks of uh, hurricane season, mm -hmm. well, until the end of November 30th is usually typically the end of the season. But at this point of the season, we usually start to see fewer hurricanes. But here is a map of all the hurricanes that have developed after September 15th. Oh my goodness. Wow. In the Atlantic Basin. Now, let me zoom into Texas. There have only been five that have come close to us after September 15th, in the last 100 years, we had Jerry in 1989, Cindy in 1963. Both of those were Category 1s that went either side of Galveston Bay. And then the two that you see to the west of us actually were two unnamed storms in the 40s. And then the one that goes up to Sabine Pass, it's actually Rita back in 2005. So a lot of storms have developed after September 15th, but typically they don't make it into our corner of the Gulf of Mexico. So we may be moving out of the danger zone now as September Well, and I'm also inspired by the fact that we do have this this little change in the weather pattern here that has brought some cooler air in because that means the upper level pattern is changing a little bit which makes it harder for storms to get into this area now the storms you named there tim none of those were category two like no like was not even rita jerry and well, no, yes, Rita, yeah, Rita was. was. I'm talking the two that came very close to us on either side of Galveston Bay. Now, we're looking at a very familiar site. This is the Strand in Galveston right now. Uh, you recognize this from Mardi Gras, of course, and so many other events. But, um, Dave Garrett, are you up there? And can you talk to us a little bit about this? I can, Melanie. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. We are, as you mentioned, over the Strand. Uh, <coughs> we are just now coming into this area here. There's uh, a lot of roof damage to some of the buildings like this one here. Uh, you know, a lot of the buildings all along the Strand, but most, most of them seem to be intact. Uh, so that's a very good news. And as you said, you know, a uh, famous landmark here uh, for Mardi Gras out here uh, on the island that uh, everybody knows pretty well. There's a little bit of debris down here. I uh, don't know if that's associated with the building to the left uh, of the picture or uh, to the archway itself. It doesn't appear to be related to the archway itself. Uh, but uh, so far, as we have seen, many of the buildings along the Strand, down from uh, the Strand to Mechanic to Church, uh, further south, seem to be in intact. We are going to try to find the tall ship Alyssa here in just a second and uh, give you a picture of that. I think this is it right here. And uh, get a, a good shot of it to see whether or not it, it withstood uh, any damage at all. It looks like it's in pretty good shape, considering. And uh, I, well, I know when we had uh, checked in with Wayne earlier, uh, much earlier, uh, probably a day and a half ago, uh, Dave, he, we had already seen significant flooding taking place at the Strand. Uh, I know we're not seeing too much wind damage, of course, in comparison to other parts of the island and on Bolivar. But um, is there any indication from what you were able to see out there about some of the, uh, the water lines on buildings in regards to flooding? No, uh, Eric, we can take a look at that real quick for you. Uh, and yes, that was a boat that we just uh, yes. passed over uh, that was kind of in the middle of a parking lot here. I, you know, it's hard to tell in this area whether or not it's supposed to be there or not. Uh, I, I don't think that that particular boat is supposed to be where it is in the middle of that parking lot. Uh, it's hard to tell from our perspective because we're right on top of the buildings. As I zoom in here, we might be able to get an idea of the water level, uh, watermark against the buildings here. You know, it's it's really hard to tell though. I don't I don't see anything that's outstanding to me. Okay, I tell you what, Dave. As we continue to look at some of these live pics from Sky Eye HD of the Strand, we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, bring Maya into uh, the microphone as well as we are anticipating a five o'clock newser.
there at Transtar headquarters in West Houston. Uh, Maya, can you hear us? Yes, indeed. We are expecting some new information at 5 o'clock. You know, even though the devastation in Houston, Harris County has not been nearly uh, and not anywhere close to what the folks in Galveston and surrounding communities suffered, a lot of people here are still looking for answers. We anticipate coming up at 5 o'clock that the Houston Police Department and the Fire Department will address a number of issues that they have to, they have had to deal with in the last couple of days, including perhaps the, a number of looters who's been arrested, which fortunately has not been as widespread as some people have feared. And also we expect the Houston Fire Department to give us some uh, specifics on just how many people, that, uh, how many calls for help, ambulance calls, that kind of thing, over the last couple of days they had to do. Uh, the good news perhaps coming out of Transtar today is that after uh, what seemed to some people like quite a long time, the pods, the point of distribution, the pod system began working in Houston and Harris County this morning with 17 spots throughout our community. That has been a welcome relief for so many people. But it did not come without some controversy because a lot of people without power and water and ice and food had hoped help from the federal government and the state government would have come much sooner. It did not. Although some uh, elected officials said they are happy with the response rate, some people in the community say they are not. And so we talked to the mayor this morning about just that disconnect and how he was able to get past that. And he gave us some pretty honest answers. Point. And that's exactly what the city of Houston and Harris County have been doing. They mobilized their volunteers, city and county employees, and have been staffing those distribution centers. We have also heard from a number of our viewers who are concerned not just about what's going on in Houston and Harris County. They would like some pods of their own in Brazoria County, down in Pearland, in uh, parts of Galveston County, maybe not on the island, which was completely evacuated because of the devastation, but off the island, some of those areas. And as as you guys have seen, uh, you just talked to a member of the FEMA uh, team on air not too long ago. He didn't have any firm answers to the points of distribution for the outlying communities and, and other uh, counties that are looking for that. So this afternoon, we, are, we will be joined by someone from FEMA at that news conference, and we hope we can find some answers about a timetable for communities like Sugar Land and in Fort Bend County and Brazoria County so they can have some answers on that respect. Here in Houston, the county and the city are back working the city workers are trying to pick up trash and heavy debris. The county workers are on the job. They're trying to assess the situation as best they can. But if you do have issues, the 311 system is back working. You can call the city if you have concerns, and uh, they will try to help you as best they can. All right, Maya, we appreciate it. That uh, update from the uh, Transtar Center there, uh, headquarters rather, in West Houston. That 5 o'clock news is coming up, folks. Of course, we will take you to that uh, when it happens. Um, in the meantime, uh, we, we're going to go back to some live pictures of Sky HD, or here we go, folks. Uh, Just a moment ago, we saw the uh, a big hole in the flagship, and of course, uh, many people know that landmark there in Galveston. And uh, you could almost see blankets right through the wall there. Is that right, Dave? Yeah, that's correct, Melanie. We're, we're trying to come around and circle the building here. Uh, just give me one second as we come around to the facade that faces the ocean here, south side of the flagship hotel. You can look right in to several rooms. Looks like two or three floors, two floors here. Uh, curled up mattress, possibly. Uh, the entire wall has been taken out here. Well, I won't say the entire wall, but a good portion of it. I certainly hope uh, nobody was in there at the time. You, you've got to imagine that would have been absolutely horrifying. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, half of the reporters that work for us uh, can attest to that. I think many of them were possibly in this building or near it anyway. Uh, there's also another hole on the north side of the flagship as well. So you've got a gaping hole here on the south side and another hole on the north side. And then I'm gonna widen out and show you this damage here, this debris along Seawall Boulevard. Mm. Look at this, this is... And this is the first time we've really gotten a chance to see all of the debris there. Uh, the Balinese Room, Hooters, those restaurants that were there that are now literally just this pile of debris. But uh, although they have moved over the debris far enough uh, so that some cars can get by vehicles that are part of the first responder system, I mean, this is just overwhelming to look at how much debris there is left.
Yeah, it's it's overwhelming. Uh, so far, uh, uh, this is the only section that I can see as I look out the window, uh, both out the right and left side. Uh, this is the only section of the seawall that is completely covered with debris. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tilt the camera back up and look down the seawall boulevard. Uh, it's going to go rather quickly here, so bear with me just one second. But you can see now the rest of Seawall Boulevard is essentially clear. There's a little bit of traffic on it. Uh, obviously, the cars that are traveling east towards us are going to have to turn off uh, on one street or another before they get to where that debris is. Uh, I don't see where they have any. Uh, well, these are all, all the utility vehicles coming to uh, help restore, I don't know, supplies, power, possibly. There's still a few other uh, vehicles that are along Seawall Boulevard, people that may have stayed. Uh, but they're not getting very far. Yeah, and for the most part, as I understand it, not a lot of people were being allowed to travel very far up and down the seawall. Um, Christine Dobbin told us that that pile of debris is supposed to be moved within the next day. Uh, obviously, it's going to take some fairly large yes. vehicles to get that out of there. But uh, as you look further down, you can see how pretty a day it is, but you can also see what it looks like, Dave, and you have to correct me here. Does that appear to be somewhat of an oil slick on top of the water? It's hard to tell. Uh, it, it could be as we come over the top of it. You know, sometimes the shots are a little deceptive. You know, mm -hmm. you, you look down into the water and you see the swirling rainbow color and you, you know, you think that it's a gas, uh, which oftentimes that it is. But in a picture like this, it's hard to tell whether it's an oil slick or not. Actually, this is a part of the beach that is still, you know, here that's revealed from the water. The rest <laughs> of it is just... You know, it's, it's water all the way up to Seawall Boulevard when yeah. most of this was beach before the storm came in. Now it's, it's just all water. Yeah, that is something else. And, the, of course, we are missing several piers, which were taken out by the storm as well. Yeah, we, uh, you know, out here Friday, uh, we started to see uh, the destruction of one of the, one of the piers uh, with the waves, you know, pummeling the pier. We caught a lot of it on tape, uh, but, you know, this is the first time that we have had a chance to actually travel uh, back where we were Friday morning before Ike came in. Uh, we are traveling west uh, down uh, Seawall Boulevard, trying to get to 8 Mile Road uh, down towards the Jamaica Beach area uh, before we have to go and refuel. Uh, so far, we haven't actually seen any piers. There's one off in the distance right here where you can see the middle section of it is gone here. Yeah, yeah, and, and one section just standing out in the water all by itself. Yes. I'll tell you what, Dave, uh, as we continue to take some of the live picks, we know you have to get fuel at some point. Um, but as we continue to take your live picks, we're also going to get some information here. We've got uh, Leonard Koenig joining us now here in the studio. He's a Social Security District Manager. And um, Mr. Koenig, thanks for joining us. And thanks for having he, me. We have called take uh, some more live pics from Sky Eye HD right now. Uh, um, it appears this um, could, yeah, this side of the causeway here, folks, that uh, we've so got a we live a, shot of. Yeah, I was just about to say, we may have already missed it, the shot of the causeway. Uh, did we miss that? Okay, sorry about that. Dave, oh, you're going to be nice enough to go back. And I appreciate right that very much. Here. Because and, we would uh, like to see this incredible shot of the causeway. Um, yeah, and one of the interesting points I heard earlier, Mel, was that uh, while people have been traveling over the causeway, uh, you can see a lot of debris there. Uh, and it appears, for all intents and purposes, to be uh, in, intact. There are some teams uh, checking out the structural integrity of the causeway. Again, it appears to be just fine. But nevertheless, they're going to uh, choose to err on the side of uh, caution and, uh, and, and look at that uh, bridge as well. Yeah, but just hard to believe all of those boats laying right smack dab mm -hmm. in the middle of the causeway, as well as, uh, you know, we've seen things like refrigerators, coolers, all kinds of things that were just thrown right out of the water and onto the bridge. And uh, so as we take that one last shot from the air of just an incredible series of shots, from Galveston Island and the environs. We appreciate, Dave, very much your uh, taking the time to go back, Dave Garrett, up in Sky at 13. Well, that's going to wrap it up for at least this last hour. And uh, we're going to take a break for about two minutes. And we're waiting now for uh, a press conference from Transstar. We'll be back in just a moment with more on the road to recovery.